Hello and welcome to this session. Today we're going to be migrating a Google account with email across to a Microsoft 365 tenant email address. We are going to be using the BitTitan migration wiz tool to achieve that. I'm going to be taking you through everything we need to do start to finish to set up the Google side, the source tenant as we'd call it, uh, to allow access into the data so we can get it out there, how to set up the migration wiz console, configure everything there and also how to configure the target tenant to receive that information as well. So as I say, I'll take you through all of the stages we'd need to do a complete end-to-end -end migration using this migration wiz tool. So firstly, let me show you the account we're migrating. It is a, a standard account. It's actually a fairly, fairly new one we've got set up here, but it's got a bit of email in there, as you can see, a standard Gmail account. And to show you that it's a live one, one that we can use. I've just sent an email to it from my account. It should pop in there. There we go. So it is a live uh, Gmail account set up. Now we're going to take that across to the uh, 365 tenant that I've got set up, which is in here. You can see there's my account. I've already configured the domain inside the, the tenant. Uh, I've already got the account set up. It's licensed, as you can see. So it is sitting there ready as a live account, ready to receive data. Now, there's obviously a few things we need to do on the Google site, and there's two places we're going to be doing that. Um, we've got to have the, uh, the console.cloud.google.com and also the normal admin.google.com. But before we jump into that, I'm going to jump into the migration with console here. We'll just log in. In fact, I, I have that set up here already. And we're going to be creating a new project. So he would obviously choose mailbox project and go in there and put some details around that. Call it that rock smashes email. We're going to set up a new company as well with some basic details in there, as you can see. Let's save that. And the next step will be telling us to set up the source endpoint. Now, this is where we do the work inside Google first because it's going to be asking us for a JSON file, which is the like the, the linkage and the admin rights that we need to give migration with to get into that. So we're going to go back to the the Google Cloud site. Now, this particular one here, you can see we go to console.cloud.google.com. I've already used this tenant for the uh, Google Drive project, which you might have seen the, the other video about. So we already have a migration with data move project here. I'm going to create a brand new one and just go through um, for the purpose of being a bit more concise on it. We're going to create a new project inside here. Now, if you don't have any projects set up in your uh, the cloud.google.com for your tenant already, it'll ask you to create one as you come in. So, so this whole new project thing is really where you would start with a new tenant or an existing one if you if you click on the, the new the new project side here. So I'm just going to put in here, we'll call this one migration with email move. And really that's all the information we need to give it. We just hit create on that and away it goes and does that for us. And it will create that. And it will jump into that and we can start setting up the, the API services. There we go. Now I should tell you as well that the help desk articles for BitTitan, as you can see here. Now I should tell you that the whole process that I'm going through here is explained very well in the help center in these BitTitan articles. Now where we find that is we go to here, perform a migration. And you can see I'm, I'm going down to the Google Workspace and I'm looking for the G Suite Gmail. And under here, we've got, as you can see, G Suite using the Gmail API to exchange online this migration guide here. Now, this will take us through, as you can see, everything we need to do and preparing the source and the like. And, and this is really the, the, uh, the steps that I'm going to be taking. So rather than have this up on the screen all the time for you to look at, I'm just going to do it on screen and explain what I'm doing. What I would want you to do is when you do set up your first project inside migration with follow this very closely as well. And then you uh, really can't go wrong with, with everything that you need to get set up and get done here. So let's go back to this dashboard here. Now, the first thing we're going to be setting up once we've got our brand new cloud project is we need to give it the APIs that, that project is going to be using to attach to the data. And we do that with this APIs and services here. We look at the, the library and we're going to be adding in uh, five different uh, API libraries that it needs to talk about. So the first one is, and you just search for them is the calendar. As we go into that, you'll see there's the calendar API, which we'll go and grab. And you just go and hit enable. Once you do that, it will enable that inside that project. And it will just say it's 
done and come back to this screen here. Here I would then go into the library once again and just go and add the next one, which I need the one for Gmail. You see the Gmail API. So we've got the calendar and then we've got the Gmail API. We also need uh, people and contacts. So I'm just going to add those as well quickly for the library and we just put in people here, enable that. We also need the contacts. So once again, library, put in contacts. This one here. Now, some of these are a bit old, these ones. Uh, it talks about them not being developed further, that they're still okay to totally use, that they're, they're available in the library for us to use, so don't worry about that. Uh, but it says obviously with with the way the progression of things go on the web, we uh, they have updates and have obviously better ways of doing things. Let's just grab that, add the SDK as well. Now, get, why I mentioned that is that in the future, obviously some of these APIs are going to be uh, decommissioned, in which case the articles inside the uh, the BitTitan Help Center will then be updated about which APIs you want to be using. Uh, so. Uh, when you come back and look at these like a new project if you do a new project in in say two or three months time it is good to refer back to the help desk article to see what apis the sdks that now need to perform that migration effectively so once we've done with that one we now need to go into and you hear the iim and admin and we need to go into service accounts because we need to create the service account that it's going to be using so we do that and we will hit the create service account right here and give it a name. I'm just going to call this one quick migration with email move. Um, create and continue. Very, very simple. We do need to tell it that it is going to be an owner. So we'll click on that, hit continue, and then hit done. It really is as simple as that to, to create that. Now we then need to give it the keys. Now the keys are effectively like the passwords that, that we'd use, and those are downloaded into those JSON files that I was mentioning earlier. So what we do with this one is we go into the account itself, and you can see up here we've got the keys. And we add a key, create a new one, and you can see adding a JSON file. Create that, and when we do that, it's going to be downloading that automatically for us, as you can see. So keep that file handy. We will definitely need that a bit later on. Now, the last step is we need to give it the, the service account. We need to tell it the scope of access that it can have. So we go back to the admin console here. So this is where you'd go to the admin.google.com and there's all your, your normal, as you can see, I'm looking at my, my single user that we're going to be migrating here. And where you go with that, under the security tab, you can see you've got access and data controls and you've got API controls. Now in here, we're going to be saying manage domain-wide delegation. So you can see here are the API clients that we've already got set up. This one is the one we had previously. This was for the, uh, the Google Drive data we were talking about. So here we're going to hit add new. Now this client ID. Now what I should tell you is that client ID is the ID of the service account that we set up inside that uh, cloud.google.com. So we need to go and grab that. So we're going to jump back into that screen. So it's good to keep that open. And when you go into the details of this account, um, what you're looking for is the, the key ID. Now, what you're going to need to do is actually click on the service account again and get back to this screen because it's this number here, this OAuth2 client ID. That's the one we need to, to grab out. So you're going to need to copy that to clipboard go back to your domain-wide delegation, and that's where you're going to paste that in. Now, I've just put the other window from the help desk article here because what, it's, what it gives you is the list of the scopes that you need to add. And it's very easy then just to grab those and cut and paste those put that away again into here. Like so hit authorize, and you can see it will put those in, and those are the... The items if we click on view details you can see those are the scopes that we've allowed this uh, this particular service account to have 
as I say, that comes directly from that the the help bittitan.com that article we're talking about so that's where you grab these from and that really is everything you need to do on the google side to set up the the service account the api controls and giving it access there so now we can move ahead to the migration with console again if i just go back in there what i'm going to be doing is setting up a new endpoint so I just give it a name and the endpoint type is going to be G Suite with the Gmail API. Now, when I do that, it's going to ask me for this JSON account. Now, this was that, that file which we downloaded previously. So we just need to go and select the file and go and grab that. And that one just pops in there and we'll give it what the super admin username is as well. Which I've put in there and hit add. So really that is our, our source endpoint um, all set up. And the next step will be to set up the destination side, which is going to be the M365 side. So there's a bit more work to do on that, uh, the same sort of type of configuration we do to receive the data. So let me uh, just talk you through that one now as well. So I'm in the M365 tenant, we'll call the target tenant. I'm going to set things up for the receiving of data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do the app registration, which is required for the modern auth component where Migration with console and the back end can then put data into any of these accounts. So if we go to show all here and we go down to identity, it could be called the Azure AD. It might have been renamed already on your tenants at Microsoft Entra. As you can see here, they are changing a few things on this. So, so just bear in mind that this may look very slightly different, but the concept is exactly the same. So what we need to do is we need to go to applications down here and we're looking for app registrations. Now in here, you're going to see some already for some of the migrations I've been doing here. I'm going to set up a nice new fresh one for this. Uh, so this is where we go in and say new registration. You can have as many as you want in there. We're just going to tie this particular migration project into this particular application. So as I say, you can have as many as you want in there. Uh, delete them when they get old is obviously a good practice, but having a nice new one is perfectly okay. So we'll call this one migration with email move. And we do want to say, this one here, the second one down, multi-tenant. And in the redirect URL, it will be have public. And in here, we paste this line in. And once again, that line is in the help.bittitan.com, the article that I showed you right at the start. That's where that, that lives. So let me just bring that over onto the page so you can see where that comes from. You can see these are the steps we're going through. And that is the, the link we're doing here. So I just put that one away again. Now, if we do the registration um, here, that will go through and create that for us. And then we can go ahead and put the other items we need. Now, we're going to need to do some API permissions. And we're also going to need to uh, make a small change to the properties in there as well. So the first one we need to do is we need to go into authentication and just go down slightly. And you'll find this one here. We need to turn on those public flows. So do that and hit save. Now we can come back to the overview again, but really what I need to go into now is the API permissions here on the left. And we need to add a permission right here. We're going to go to APIs my organization uses, and it's quite easy to, to type this in. We need to just type in type Office 365 in there. You'll see you get these, and we want to get into Exchange Online because we're, we're moving mail data. That's really the API that we need to, to have. And we need delegated permissions. Now, the one we're after here out of all of these is just a single one, which is under EWS, which is access user all. Grab that, add that permission. And you see it'll just pop up down here. And the last step on that, we need to say grant admin concept. We do that with a yes, and that will grant that for that API. The next step, we're going to need to take the tenant ID and the client ID, as you can see these two here, and we need to just record what they are. Now, the best way to do this is just run up a notepad screen and you'll see why this is, this is good to do. Is because we need to build a couple of things for the advanced options in the project. Now, off the, once again, off the, the help desk article, we need to grab these two items, which you'll see. Like so. Those there, and we need to put those in. So, this is where 
uh, it binds itself through to these identities. So we need the client ID, which is this one here. So we'll copy that to clipboard and paste that one in there and also grab the tenant ID, this one, and pop that in there as well. And we're going to use that a little later on. A couple more things we need to do. First thing I do recommend we have what I've got here, migration with service account. So you can see here, migwiz at palladium.com. That's one of the domains we have in that, uh, in that tenant. And what we need to have here, I use this one to, to when it asks for the uh, credentials of the admin account, this is the one I give it. It's good because then once you've done the migration, you can quite easily take it away and just remove that account completely. That's a good good security exercise to do. And of course, it removes all the access that it, that it had inside your migration with console. So that's really where my recommendation comes in there. But what you do need to have is under the themes and groups here, if we look at the active groups, and I want to look at the security groups. You'll see there's one here called Migration Wiz. And so we create that one. And inside here, you can see that from a member's perspective, that's where I put that service account as well. So that's another another step that you want to uh, to do and get done. It helps with that, that modern authentication. The console will use this security group and see that, that things are, are registered. And it will obviously work correctly when you do that. And we also need to set up the application impersonation for the account. And we do that with PowerShell connecting to the target tenant. So in here, we'll just do the, the normal connect exchange online and give it some credentials, which we do in this little pop-up box here. Hit next, it'll ask us for a password. And obviously on this account, I've got the MFA turned on. So I'll just put that in there. And that connects us in. Now what we need to turn on here is the uh, organization customization. And what we, now the command we use for that is enable organization customization. Now this one is going to come back with an error when I run it because I've already run it previously. And you can see here, the error is this operation is not required. Organization is already enabled for customers. Lots of long words in there, but it's already done. So that's that's uh, that's quite normal to see. Now I've also already set up the impersonation on this tenant as well. So I'm going to get a similar message when I run the command to to do that. But I'm going to show you what the command is. Also, I need to show you as well is if that command fails and says that you do not have authority to create the application impersonation, you can set it up manually through the Exchange Console in M365. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So let's just run this command and, uh, and I'll put it in here so you can see it, just so we can get uh, a bit more concise on that. So here's our command, new management role assignment. The role is the application impersonation and the user is that service account that we set up before. So when I run this one, let's just see what that does. And you can see here, it has gone in effectively Nice and quickly. Too good. Now, this is the response you'd expect to get. Um, now, if you do get the error on that, as I say, saying that you don't have rights to do it, let me show you where you'd find that in the Exchange Console. So down here, you'd go into Exchange. And from here, we're going to look at roles and admin roles. And here, I've probably got one already set up. Yes, there we are. Application impersonation. So what you do if I look at this one, first of all, you can see um, it's also uh, the service accounts assigned, as you'd expect. That's what that command has just done for us. And obviously the, the permissions, it's going to have application impersonation here. Now, if that wasn't there, what you do is you would say add a role group. And that's where you give it a name, application. And let's say I, I just call this one app two, just, just so there's something in there. But what we're looking for here is when you do next, you would go down here and it's actually right down the bottom of the application and click on that one and then go through next and then add the people in manually. That is how you'd set up exactly the same thing as that PowerShell command through that Exchange um, admin console. And that will have the same effect as the same task. So, And this will work through if you're a GA account. As I say, sometimes that PowerShell does say you don't have permission to run this and this is what you would need to do to get around that. So in this one, I'm just going to cancel out of that right there. And 
hop back to our migration with console now because this is all set up and ready to go. Pop that one down as well. So we're going to create a new endpoint and we'll call this one the TCG E5 demo, which is like that. And the endpoint type is going to be our standard Microsoft 365. Now, these are the credentials that we put in. These are the uh, the migration with service account, again, that we've just created in the, in the last few minutes. So we'll put those in and hit add, and away it goes. Uh, nope, don't need that. And save and go to summary. Now, what we will do straight away is before we go in and do anything else, I'm going to go into the advanced options because we need to put those in. And this is where we come back to what we had in Notepad. So if I just bring up Notepad here. That's our session there. We need to put these two lines into the advanced options. So that's one there. And the second one, like that, put that in there as well. Now, another thing to check in here just quickly as we go to the source and destination, you can see that the way we handle things, we're going to convert labels to folders. That's that's pretty standard, but also making sure that on our destination, the impersonation to authenticate is turned on. It should be. That is a default option, but you do want to check that that is the case. So we'll do that and save our advanced options, and we're going to be saving the project as well. Now that will take us into the adding items page. Now with everything set up, I'm just going to do a quick add and put in the, the, the user which we're migrating. You can also do the bulk add, put a CSV file in there, however you want to do this. But we've only got one user. I'm just going to type it in. And remembering that uh, you don't have to have the same UPN. If, you, if you're changing it so that you might have Mark here, it might have mark.rochester at rocksmashers.com. That's OK. We just add them in accordingly. We need to just specify the source and the destination. So we'll just hit save item and close, and that will pop into this screen, which is our, once again, our normal migration with screen that I'm sure you've all seen before. So really to kick off the migration, uh, we do need to apply a license. So we'll do that with that user, user bundle. So I'm going to click here, and we will apply license. I'll just accept that. There we go, apply. It'll take a minute or so to, uh, to appear, but as soon as we refresh and see that with a yes, and obviously we're good to go with that. Um, in the meantime, we can do the verify credentials. We don't need a license to do the verify credentials, but um, obviously I will be migrating, so I'm going to be turning that on too. So we just keep them ticked, and we'll just go to verify credentials. Now what that does is it goes into the, the back end of both the source and the destination tenants and makes sure that, one, it can pick up the data and it can see what it's meant to have, and secondly, it can access the target tenant and access the mailbox that's in there and have rights to get data in there as well. So this is something you definitely do want to do before you start any migrations. Verify credential is very important. We're hoping that comes back and says completed verification. So let's uh, just wait a few minutes for that to appear and see what it says. And with the refresh, a little while later, there we go, completed verification. Now that means that the source and the target tenants are set up correctly. We've done everything right, and we are good to proceed with the migration. So we're going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to explain what the pre-stage does, and then the full migration. A pre-stage is really what you would do to get all the data up to a certain point in time. So if you're doing large migrations, and you've got a large number of mailboxes, obviously, if you were going to be cutting over, let's say, Friday evening, you wouldn't want to do or start, say, a 30 gig mailbox on that cut overnight. You want to pre-stage everything, so you get all of the mail over up to maybe, say, the last 30 days, which you'd, you'd click on here, and that will bring everything over, obviously, we accept the last 30 days. So when you do the full migration and the cut over, it just has to do the catch up which is the last 30 days of mail. So if you've got a good few hundred or even a thousand mailboxes and that they're, they're very, very large, you want to be pre-staging uh, at least a week or two weeks ahead. And then when you come to the full migration, you can cut over those relatively quickly on that night. So for this particular migration, it's a small amount of data. I'm not going to do a pre-stage. I am just going to go straight into a full migration. This one here, and it, as you can see, contacts, mail, calendars. You might have noticed on the pre-stage that the pre-stage doesn't do contacts and calendars. Those are always relatively small amounts of data in there. So therefore, it doesn't need to. A pre-stage will just do the mail. So when you do a full migration is when it does all the contacts and the calendars. 
I can schedule it to start at a particular time. If I say, hey, I want to kick that off at like 8 p.m. tonight or, or, or whatever you want to do, you can do that. In this case, I'm just going to hit start migration and get the get the data over. You can see that I've actually logged into uh, the account on the 365 side. So I'm expecting the data to appear there. Obviously, it doesn't happen instantly. It's got to run through and, and do the migration. Um, so uh, we'll just sit there and watch and uh, see see the data come in. So this is finished. We've got data coming into the tenant. You can see there's all the mail there. If we have a quick look at the calendar. The calendar events have come over. It's good. And also looking at contacts. Yes, the contacts come over as well. So really what we're looking at here is a completed migration for this account. Let's just jump back to the migration with console. And you can see they're completed full. There's not a lot of data in there, so it did go through pretty quickly. If I click on the user, you can see how much it's actually done, which uh, you see there's not too much, but it has done the, the data, which is good to see. Now, the only thing really left for this whole migration would be if we had a lot of accounts here, would be to change those MX records to point into the M365 tenant and away from Google, and then probably go back and disable those Google accounts as well after you've completed everything. So that really does finish up this session. I thank you for watching. And once again, refer to that help.bitsitan.com for more information on about how to do things. Uh, it's a very, very good source of information. It covers everything that you need to do for a migration. And also obviously go back and forth with the video. If you do get errors on the, the statuses here or the, or the verification errors, go back and make sure those prereqs are all done correctly. And otherwise you can log a help desk ticket and they can help you out with that as well. But thank you for watching. Really appreciate it when you do subscribe to the channel. Uh, please do that. Thank you very much. And I will talk to you next time. Have a good day.